This is Mitch, and welcome to the 1000houses.com podcast. I'm here with John Cochran, and no, you're not being sued. He's going to teach you how to find uh, the sweet spot in your town, how to market, how to find these motivated sellers, and where to look for them. Uh, in the process, I'd like to thank taxfreefuture.com. If you have a retirement plan, self, uh, you know, tax deferred or tax uh, free, and it's not self-directed, and you would like to take control of your own financial future and decide where your money gets invested and at what rates and at what risk, then check out taxfreefuture.com. It's a place to roll over your retirement funds into a self-directed retirement fund where you get to choose how you want to invest your money and take control of your financial future. There's about 33 little video vignettes there. If you'll just give your micro information, I promise these people won't be beating you up with an endless stream of phone calls and texts, but give them your micro information and they'll open up 33 little video vignettes. You won't believe what you can do in these retirement programs. Uh, you won't believe how you can proliferate even a tiny amount of money into millions in theory, if you want to. So uh, check it out, taxfreefuture.com. All right, John, we're going to talk about uh, finding the sweet spot and how to, how and where to buy properties. But give us a little bit about your background, uh, where are you from and how did you find yourself in real estate? Yeah, so um, born and raised Dayton, Ohio. I like to call it the vacation capital of the world where everybody flocks to, right? Um, <laughs> 38 years old, uh, been in real estate for 19 years. So I've been in it since I was uh, 19 years old. My mother owned um, a lot of rentals. And uh, back in the 90s, she owned a lot of rentals that um, obviously I was growing up at that time. And I got to see kind of, I got to mow the grass and kind of go uh, and see kind of how things were managed and everything else. And kind of got my boot into the the, the door with uh, the rental business and everything else. And um you know, I uh, got into real estate, you know, as soon as I, I uh, graduated from high school, had a, uh, bought a couple of properties, flipped a couple of properties, and I've kind of been addicted ever since. So, um, very interesting though, you know, the way that I started. And I, I started um, by investing into one particular area um, where I was, you know, very, very used to, um, you know, hanging out in or whatnot. And, really I, I, I had to develop system to get me out of that area because that area I flipped about just about every single house in that area. So I needed better systems to feel comfortable as a real estate investor to start finding properties outside of that area and that I could be very, very safe in. And uh, so I, I started developing systems to put me outside of that area to be able to find properties in. Hey, so you're, and you also have a giveaway for us. Describe what you're giving away today. Yeah, so I, I have a, a tool that we use called the Sweet Spot Locator. And basically what that Sweet Spot Locator does is it all across the entire United States, even in all of the non-disclosure states where they don't disclose the sales prices, what it will do is it will uh, kind of scan uh, your area and then what you do is you scan the area and then it'll spit out a report to you that tells you the best places to go out there and invest into. So um, it looks at all of the sales history over the past 12 months and it will scan the entire you know, area. About a 20 mile radius is about what people want to do. And it will scan that area. And then what it will do is, is it will recommend the best places to invest. It will also tell you where you should not be buying properties at as well based upon there's just not much activity you know in that area over the past 12 months so um you scan your area and then it will recommend the best places to go out there and invest and then what you do is you take those areas where you know that there's a lot of buyer activity you know that there's a lot of buyers buying in that area and then you start marketing to sellers in those areas and, and that will ensure that you know you're kind of into the right sweet spots Okay. So where do you start uh, when you're talking about sweet spots? What's the definition of a sweet spot? Well, in, in my world, the definition of a sweet spot is, is really, it's, it's the best place where buyers are actually currently buying houses in. That's what I define my sweet spot in as the best 
the best areas, the best locations where buyers are buying properties in. We will typically have, we actually have four different sweet spot zones. The first zone we call a wholesale zone. And uh, basically what that is, it's, it's a sweet spot where there's a lot of buyer activity. There's a lot of people buying, but typically those buyers are buying, you know, below the, the median sales price. You know, those are landlords and, and stuff like that. So those are zones that, you know, you can absolutely go out there and invest in, but, you know, in the wholesale zone, you should wholesale properties out. You shouldn't go out there and rehab properties because those are just well below the median sales price. So you want to keep them, you know, below the median sales price. You don't want to go in there and, and fix those properties up and put granite countertops and everything in those because you'll just lose money. Then we've got a second sweet spot, which would be a, we call it a prehab sweet spot. It's, it's right around the average. So what we'll do is we will go through and scan an entire area and find out what the median sales price is in that area. And then once we know what that figure actually is, let's say it's $100,000, then what we'll do is we'll have four sweet spots off of that $100,000. So um, if, you know, uh, if, if you go into an area and, you, you know, uh, the, the bottom, you know, uh, you know, the median sales price is around 40,000, but there's a lot of buyer activity. That's a sweet spot, but you have to go through and, and, and typically wholesale all those properties out. That would be called a wholesale sweet spot. You know, and then what we'll do is uh, we've got a prehab sweet spot as well, which is kind of right around the median sales price. So if, if there's a lot of buyer activities into a, a prehab sweet spot, what we'll do is we will uh, make sure that we prehab those properties. We'll make sure that, you know, we're making them rental ready and we're not fixing them up too much, but we're not doing, you know, not enough to those properties either. That would be a prehab sweet spot. Then we've got a rehab sweet spot as well. These are properties that, you know, uh, it looks at that median sales price, properties that have a lot of buyer activity that uh, is going well above that median sales price. That's where we're rehabbing properties at. And then the fourth sweet spot that we'll have is, is an area where you shouldn't even go into. We call it an avoid zone. And basically what that means is, is that, you know, hey, John, don't, don't go in that area because there's nobody, there's not enough buyer activity in that area. So when we look at, when I look at sweet spots, it's all based upon how much buyer activity is actually going on into a particular zone. All right. So you'll even show them the no-go zone. All right. So uh, how did, what motivated uh, someone to take on the task of building a software like this? Because I don't think it's easy. Tell me about your experience of, of making your software. Yeah. So you have it done or you do it yourself or did you sub it out or what did you do? And the reason why I'm asking is so many people get in this business and they think they're going to make a tool, right? And I want to talk a little bit about what you're undertaking when you decide to make a tool. Yeah, so this was actually my second go at it, and um, I did not, I'm not a developer or anything like that. It, it was my second, uh, it's actually my second software. My first software was, uh, you know, we've had thousands and thousands of users onto my very first software, but I'll tell you, you know, my second software that I've done uh, with this, which is called Systemate, and basically what that software will do is it will go through and, and it really manages your entire real estate investing business. But what it will do is it will automatically market to and follow up with sellers in a way that nobody's ever seen before. And uh, I'll tell you the way that... Um, so is it classified as a CRM? 100%. You know, okay. so it is totally a CRM. And I'll tell you the way that I got into it is... Um, we were, um, I, I've, I've been selling coaching and stuff like that for, you know, 10 years and we were running, a lot of people are running like challenges and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, we were, we had a challenge going on where we had an application process where people would fill out an application and then they had to be approved to, to go in there and, and, you know, get into this challenge. I had drove, drove about 1700, um, applications into this challenge and I got so mad at my sales team because they were not making any sales. I, I had done my job as a marketer to bring the, you know, the, uh, the applications to the table. They just weren't closing on them. So I got mad at them and I said, look, you know, throw me into the rotation. Let me be a sales guy. So I got in there and I did it and I closed um, out of 10 people. I closed half of them. And uh, the, you know, when I really looked at, you know, well, what in the world was I doing different? 
It was because what I was doing different was I would call the person and if they didn't pick up, I'd go through and shoot them a text. And if they didn't go through and respond to that, then I would go out there and I'd email them. And if I still hadn't heard from them, I wasn't scared to send direct mail to them, you know, and, and I would go out there and close them that way. And typically the way that they were doing it, they would call, Oh, I didn't hear any, or nobody uh, didn't get a hold of anybody. Then I just hang up. And, and in the story, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like, you know, I have people say this, well, I, I, I tried to get a hold of you. I said, no, try to get a hold of me. Like I owe you $2,000. Okay. Try to get a hold of me like that. Not yeah. like I, it rained twice. He didn't answer. Yep. And so what I did was I looked at that and I was like, you know, I can actually automate that entire process of what I just did. So I can bring a lead into an actual system and then I can shoot them a text. And if they don't go out there and respond to me, then I can actually go out there and send them an email. And then if they still don't respond to me, I can go up, go through and send them a thank you card or a postcard or whatever. And then that's how system eight was actually built. The framework of it was actually built by me going out there and automating the marketing and the follow-up to motivated sellers and to buyers and then, then since then we brought in leads, we brought in the sweet spot locator to where, and uh, skip tracing and everything else to make it a full all-in-one system. Okay, so, so the second time I've done it. It's all about the follow-up, right? I mean, people think they're gonna go out there and buy a house on the first time they talk to someone. That's not usually how it works. What's your experience? Well, it won't happen that way. I mean, typically, you know, what I have found is that investors, what, what investors do, see, see I have a, a very unique, you know, uh, position right now because I own a software that provides leads and does marketing to motivated sellers and follow up. I've got a lot of insights on what's going on into the actual market. I've got a lot of insights of what people are doing, what leads are actually going through and responding, et cetera. What most people end up doing is, is they'll go out there and they'll, they'll, uh, get a list of people and then they'll go and, and market to that list. They'll send a postcard. If they don't go through and get instant results, they won't send another follow-up piece to that, you know, because they didn't do a deal. The truth of it is, is that, you know, what people don't understand is that if you go through and send a postcard, that postcard is going to get a one to a 3% response rate. And you're probably not even going to do a deal on it. So what you want to do in your marketing is you want to go and do your cheap marketing first, throw a postcard out there to make sure that you got the right address. And then if they don't respond to you, boost it up, go through and follow up via phone call to that actual um, postcard. And what you'll see is, your, yeah, your postcard will get a 1% response rate. But when you follow up to it uh, on a phone call or a text, just following up on that postcard, you'll boost that up to about eight to a 10% response rate. And people just give up too easy, you know, on the marketing side of this, that's point blank. What happens? Yeah. So, you know, I started using um, Livecom, which is, which was, uh, I'm a 50% owner of, of Livecom, L I V E C O M M. It's a, Smartphone numbers, you know, they capture incoming callers, cell phone numbers, but it can also text mass distribution lists. But it can, it also has a text merge feature where I can say, "Hey, John, are you still interested in the prop in selling the property at one two three Main Street?" So there's two variables, John and one two three Main Street, and I can send out a thousand emails in like thirty seconds to a thousand different people, but it all seems very personal. The other way to do it is to tie it to tie it to a real life event. Like you could send out a text saying, hey, John, I, I just sent you a postcard. It ought to be in your mail like tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. You'll recognize it's yellow. Would you please check out my postcard? And you send that. Like it's all about the touches, right? With the chances of him, like he'll be looking for the postcard now amongst all the other postcards because I described it. It's yellow and red and it's from cashforhouses.net, you know, or whatever. And, and you just got to find ways to up your chances to move that 1% or 3%, just a tick or two, you know, you're not gonna, uh, at least I haven't found a way to change it to 50% or something, but you know, you just get people to start knowing you on a personal level. And when you can automate this stuff, like John's talking about, it, because trying to get anybody to stick to the routine, much less the solo guy who has to do everything to stick to a routine is almost impossible. Like don't even think you're gonna follow up. If, if you're a one man show and you're not automating this process, don't even think for a minute that you're gonna do it for over 30 days, cause you're not. No. If you even do it three days in a row, you know? So you gotta get, you gotta get a system like this. Um, plus it's all about automation, right? You're, 
You're not supposed to be doing the follow-up where you make the money is showing up to the guy that says, yeah, come over, let's talk. That's where you make the money. Yeah, you, you don't make money as an investor writing letters. And, and quite honestly, Mitch, I, th- I think that's why a lot of people don't do it is, you know, for a fact that when somebody goes through and calls you, like a seller will go through and call you, you know, for a fact that you should probably go out there and send them a card or something like that. If, if you only had one seller, right, one seller, and, and I said, you've, you've got one seller and you've got 30 days to go through and put that deal under contract or, or you've got 30 days to go through and get that person to respond to you. Well, surely you're not going to go through and, and, and just call them or send them a postcard. Well, they didn't go out there and, you know, respond to me. That's not the way it works. You well, know? That's, that's an interesting concept. Treat every one of them if this the, as if they're the only lead you have for the next 30 days. Like it's the only one you've got to work. So what all can you do? And that's, that's what my system does is, is it treats every single lead like it's the only lead they're ever going to have. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, what, do, what are your success rate? I mean, can we put this into like a, um, a percentage so people don't, don't, uh, get a false sense of, of whatever. Like I, I like to tell people, you know, we're calling on 20 to 25 people to buy a house and we're staying with them, you know, to buy a, to buy eight houses a, a month. I bought about a hundred houses a year for over two decades. I mean, I know the numbers, you know, you're going to call on 25 people to get a house. Yep. So basically, not only are you just going to call them, but you're going to stick with them, right? That's the most important thing. If you go through and, and really have a system work the lead and market to a lead and follow up with the lead for you, you know, within a 30 to a 45 day period, we're getting about a 41% response rate. So, you know, that means that if in 30 days, you know, what we're doing is we will go through and, and send a postcard to per- people. We'll go through and do uh, uh, phone calls to people. Then we'll text the people. We'll email the people. And then we'll keep following up with them in different ways. The, 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 the real magic is when you just do things, people have to see you all over the place. They, they can't go and just, you know, send postcards to people left and right. You've got to do it in multiple ways. And when you do multiple touches in different ways, we average about a 41% response rate in 30 days. Okay, so when you say response rate, is don't ever mail me again a response? Yeah, but uh, that's- is that, part of the, is that part of that 41%? I just want people to be prepared. 100%, yeah, absolutely. If you don't have people telling you to stop, you're not doing a good job at all. Well, you're not doing a good job in your marketing. Yeah. You know, you're not saying the right stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then, yeah, there's a way to mod- modify that. Um, but at least in my experience, Johnny, someone's just going to be mad at you because you sent them a postcard to buy their house. It doesn't matter what, what, you know, how, what, what your intention was, you know, it doesn't matter. But, and I say, if, if you don't, if you don't get a few of those, you're really not doing any numbers at all. So. No, I'll tell you some of the weirdest. Um, I've actually had the cops called on me two times, um, literally for sending people a, a, a postcard. You know, they, they would, they saw it, they saw my marketing in there and they called the police on me uh, for mm-hmm. doing it. It's, it's, it's like the weirdest thing, but I've actually had it happen twice. Did the police even show up? The police came to me and they said, just take them off your list. I mean, they, they say nothing about it. You know, there, there's nothing that they can do. I mean, there's, there's no crime in sending somebody an actual postcard. I mean, people, people get, they, they bound to receive a solicitation from Sears and, and, all kinds of places all day long. Why, why is your solicitation so offensive? I guess because it, you're trying to buy their house, but I don't know. So how much can people expect to pay for a system like this? I mean, what do they have to budget for a decent CRM system that'll, and, and how many people can you be following in any one month? Is there a limit? Yeah, so we, we have actually, we've, we've, we've got different plans. So most people will go with like our middle plan with it. It's 200 bucks a month just to kind of have the, the automation and everything, uh, you know, behind you, uh, you know, doing all the automation. But then uh, the, the very unique thing about that is we, you can actually build a custom pipeline any way that you want. So you can dump motivated sellers or grab the sellers directly from us. And then you can actually market to them any way they want. So say that you want to, you know, your very first thing to, to put a postcard, you know, in front of people, it's very simple. You can, you can go into our system, drag postcard, and then you can write whatever you want into that actual postcard. That's what's the unique thing about us. 
is, is that, you know, you can actually use the stuff that we've got right out of the gate, or you can actually write all of your own stuff. And, and one of the things that we really pride ourselves on is we actually uh, don't do much printed stuff. A lot of our stuff is all handwritten from a human. So, um, you know, we, there's, there's uh, automation that, that uh, you have to do with all that stuff. And then um, all of our actions that we send out, like the handwritten postcards and everything like that, it, depending on what plan you are, is, is basically. So when you say handwritten, are you saying truly handwritten or a handwritten font that you can't tell the difference? I'm talking truly handwritten with a, an actual pen from a human being. So are you subbing this out overseas or what? No, not overseas, but we do sub it out, yeah. Stay-at-home moms. Uh, our, our direct mail company that, that we have integrated with, that we have an agreement with, it, they've got 2,000 handwriters over the entire country. So we send them files every single day to go out there and handwrite them. They, they handwrite them up, and then they uh, – of whatever they want to say in them, and then they throw them out the mail. You know, that's – dawns on me. That's probably really helping a lot of people that need to – do some work and something that anybody can probably do, or most people, 99% of the people know how to write on yeah. a piece of paper with a pen. And some of these people desperately need a way to make a little extra money. So absolutely great, great, great cause probably. Uh, so you said that's the middle. Tell me the first, the middle, you just described the middle about 200 months. Tell me about the, the level one and the level three. Level one, it basically does not have any automation to it. It's $79 a month. It doesn't have any automation to it. So you can dump the leads in there. There is a lead, you know, count. I think it's 2,000 leads that you're allowed to have into your system, but you actually physically have to move these leads yourself. So you have to go in there, click the buttons uh, for any uh, direct mail or uh, any uh, text messages, emails or anything like that in order to go out. Kind of helps someone control their budget though, right? Yeah. Yeah, like so. If you're working on a shoestring, you might want to take that one because you decide if you have some money this week or whatever. You make your moves, and I'm just trying to be a realist. Not everybody, you know. Everybody started out broke, as far as I know. Do you know anybody that started out rich? No, no, no I don't. Have. I know some people that started out with a shit pot of money, and then they went broke, and then they had to learn how to do it and get it back because it's too easy to blow it when you show up with a bunch of money and you don't really know what you're doing. Absolutely. Our middle plan is 199 a month, and uh, there's a 25,000 um, lead limit into there. Um, you know, and that's because we provide leads. So you know, you can go out there and get 25,000 leads from us. Then our uh, our last plan, which is our highest plan, is 299 a month, um, and it's unlimited leads. It's uh, unlimited uh, skip tracing. It's basically everything is unlimited with it. Yeah, uh, and how much is that level? The level three. Two ninety nine a month, and our um, our direct mail, everything that we send out automa automatically, we do at cost. So, hey, it, I, yeah, I I, I want to point this out that um, you know about twenty five thousand leads. You think, wow, that's a lot. I mean, let me just say, on any given day, we're tracking ten thousand people, and it should be, you know, we we would want to get it to thirty thousand people. You know, we're just the only reason we're tracking the 10 is because we called it down to like the highest potential profit is these 10,000 people, but there's a whole nother set of 10,000 after them and 10,000 after them. So it doesn't take long to rack up a bunch of leads. Um, and it's a numbers game. No, no, it's, absolutely. Numbers game. Yeah. it's totally a numbers game. And so I would say this, it's just, if you get the $300 package, it only takes one, one solid deal or a decent wholesale deal to put 10 grand in your bank. That's a lot of $300 is a month. And, you know, sometimes you got to roll a little bit back into your business. So take, you know, get a $10,000 wholesale deal, keep three or four for yourself, put 6,000 in the bank and get yourself a budget and start figuring out how you're going to start taking some things off your shoulders so that a, you can just do what makes money, which is sign contracts. Yeah. And B, have a life. You know, like you can't I burn I'm the worst one in the world to talk about this. I burned the candle at both ends for so long I about collapsed. You know, I actually automated when I didn't have a choice anymore. I couldn't do it anymore. Um, so you know, different people learn different ways. But uh I say you start with whatever budget you can if you can only start with the 79, but as soon as you get lucky, get a hit and make a little money, move your budget up 
to think about following 25,000 people with automated follow-up, I don't know there's any way in the world you don't make back $3,600 in a year. There's no way. There's no way, right, that's what I'm saying. But you gotta commit to $3,600 for the year or you know, uh, $2,400 for the year, something. You gotta stay committed to it. And I, I personally think $300 a, a month for what you're doing is an incredible value because it's going to pay for itself very, very soon. If you have any skills at all, you, ha you have to learn how to close though. If you don't know how to close and write a contract, let's get that out of the way first before you start spending money. The, the truth of it is, is that people just don't do the follow-up. Let, let's sit here and be honest. Like if you go on to a, an appointment with a motivated seller or whatnot, technically you should be following up with that person after that appointment. How many people do? Very few. You know, if, if you go out there and put an offer out onto a property and they reject your offer, most people say, let's go to the next lead. You'd never follow up with that person. Our system never stops. You know, it never stops the follow-up. And, and that's, what, that's the missing piece that mo so many people are missing out on that they just don't do because they look at it as busy work. That's what we automated. Yeah. Um, one little trick I learned lately, I don't know. Tell me if you, tell me if you use this. I don't, I don't know if you do or not. Um, but I was just picturing it in the um, handwritten letter. I don't know if it gives the letter away or not, but I was always like to say, you know, leave my phone number if you want to call me and talk about it. Here's my phone number. Uh, I took the time to make a free recorded message kind of concerning your house. Now, it's mis a little misleading because it's concerning your house, but it, it sounds like it's specific, but it's not. You know, it's concerning everybody's house. And so they call and the recording can say anything you want it to say, but Livecom is capturing their cell phone number as they're listening to the recording. And I'm getting a text saying someone from this number is listening to your recorder from handwritten letter number 104. You know, and it's an extra chance to pick up uh, a lead because sometimes people don't want to call phone numbers because it's confrontational. They're going to get someone on the line and they're going to have to deal with a salesman who's trying to buy their house or whatever they're afraid of. Um, but they will call a recorded message because they think it's non-confrontational. Little do they know that you're fixing to get their phone number, give them two or three minutes to get through the recording, and then you're going to call them. Yep. So I added that little feature to my um, letters and postcards here recently. Um, I'm waiting to see exactly how it works, but we've already had it work like four times where they're not contacting us, but we know how to get a hold of them. Yeah. All they have to do is dial the number. You know, yeah. they have to dial the number which opts them in, and then, you know, you can um, follow up with them. Yeah. And then they would go right into the CRM in your case, right? Like you could, yeah. you could figure that out. So, all right. Um, so again, I want you guys to go to 1000houses.com forward slash sweet spot, S W E E T S P O T, no spaces, no all lowercase. Just go to 1000houses.com sweet spot. You'll get over to the show notes over there. We're going to talk about, um, the, the sweet spot locator system. And we're also going to talk about what was it? Mate system mate. Yep system mate which is the crm um you'll get all the contact information and everything for john cochran and, and, and all about his company i don't know maybe you're interested in some coaching if he's still doing that whatever it is you're going to be able to find his websites and all that stuff you just go to 1000houses.com forward slash sweet spot and uh uh get over there and, and check it out believe me if you're a one-man show you need a CRM, you, like nobody's business. You, you actually need a CRM and you need a, 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 a virtual assistant or a VA somewhere o overseas, something cheap you can handle. You got to have those two things or you're, or, or you're killing yourself. You're in your own way. You are definitely in your own way. So, and, you know, talk to John and his team and look at what he's got. But no matter what, you have to solve those two issues as fast as you can because a one-man show in this business uh, you're missing out on a ton and you're setting yourself up for frustration and burnout yeah. period. And, and, and it's hard to overcome, you know, that burnout you get, you run out of gas. It takes a little while to recover. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, your MO in real estate. What, what, what is your MO? What do you do? Yeah. So um, been wholesaling for a long time and um, that's still a big part of it. Uh, really what I'm focused on right now is uh, buying properties and packages. 
you know, um, you know, really going after uh, marketing to absentee owners that own multiple properties. So we'll go through and, you know, really market hard and follow up with hard people that own more than 10 properties. And uh, what we'll do is we'll send them straight to a, a website or have them call a, a phone number. We call them lead capture numbers in our world. And um, we'll have them call that number and uh, then we'll just keep following up with them from there. But that, that's my big thing right now uh, because, um, you know, what I found is that those people will actually carry a lot of the, uh, the notes, you know, yeah, with- they, they carry the paper because they understand cash flow. They understand first lien. They understand, you know, that the tax ramifications are getting a lump sum right now. They yeah. understand how your down payment or things offset their risk. That was perfect, man. I love that. I love that. That's our big focus right now is anybody that's got more than 10 single family units. That's, that's who we're marketing to. Very, very inspirational. You know, people ask me, you know, Mitch, if you're so successful, why do you still do all this crap? You're like, you must not really be. No, for one is let's just get real serious. I'm going to take a little side John here. You know, you got a relatively vibrant person with a crap load way more money than they need and nothing but spare time, you know, that man can find very aggressive demons, you know, and believe me, you're, you're going to find them. Are you a man? I'm a man. Are we going to find them? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, uh, it's just a natural tendency. I learned a long time ago to stay busy. Uh, what do I, you know, at this point in my life, it's not really about all the money anymore. I mean, I, I, if someone gave me a million bucks today, it ain't going to change what I drive. It's not going to change what I eat. It's not going to change where I live. It's not going to change my friends. It's not going to change anything. Um, uh, what I need more than ever now is I need an emotional uh, a reason, you know, an emotional reason. I need a higher reason to do this. My higher reason is to help other people be able to quit their J-O-B at even the most modest level so that they can free up 2,600 hours a year to become who they're supposed to be and to, to be the father and the leader of their family or their company or whatever it is they want to do, but have, you know, the first thing, not a million dollar goal, you know, forget about the million dollar goals right now. Your first goal, in my humble opinion, anyone's first goal is to get out of the J-O-B because when you do that, you got to have a, a cash flow coming in that replaces whatever it is you make at your job, whether that's $3,000 a month or $4,500 or $6,000, whatever it is, you got, that's your first goal because that's going to free up 2,600 hours a year once you do that. And now if being wealthy is in the cards for you, this is when we get it done with that extra 2,600 hours a year. You know, and so that's the goal of this podcast. And the other reason I do this is, you know, I stay busy. I stay out of trouble. I try to be helpful and help other people attain um, uh, financial freedom that would be good for them. And I don't care how they do it. Amazon reselling. I don't care. Build a software or go buy houses. I don't care how you figure it out. But the other reason I do it is because I meet people like John who are very innovative, forward thinkers. Um, ahead of their time sometimes in the concepts that they have or very persistent and know exactly how to dial something in of a very specific nature. And it keeps me sharp and it keeps my businesses running well. And it keeps me on top of the game and kind of up with what's going on today. And that's exactly why I do this podcast for those handful of reasons right there. Um, do I always want to do this podcast after seven years? No, not all the time. But then I always get rejuvenated when I talk to someone like John and go, yeah, there's a man kicking some ass. He's doing some, you know, he's, he's got it figured out. He knows what he's doing, you know, and that's, and that's why I do it. What do you say to that? Dude, I love it. I mean, um, and, and that's, that's why I do it as well. It's, and you know, pe people don't understand, they, they think you do it for the money, but the truth of it is, 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 is that some people do, but the truth of it is, is that I don't, you know, I, um, it's nice to come on and talk to people like you because people like you keep me sharp, right? And, and you keep me getting to that next level, you know, with this stuff. If, if you're working a burn, burnout, you know, J-O-B or whatnot, you're going to be at that level. You know, you're going to be at that level. It's, it's, it's you know, you, you, uh, you are, you know, who your friends are. You know, so the truth of it is, is that, you know, when, when I can be around you and listen to people like you and what you're doing in your business with the storage units and everything else, it makes me strive to go more, automate more, and then spend more time with my family. You know, that's what it's all about. 
Well, ultimately, it's about the freedom. Yeah. But before there's freedom, you generally have to get accomplished. You know what I mean? We're, 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 we're like, there's no way around it. You buy your way out of slavery. I mean, modern day slavery, the old, you know, you, you have to buy your way out of it. You know what I mean? There's no other way. And we, we can become slaves to our jobs. We can become slaves to our lifestyles. And how you change it is you get in a different room with a different conversation of people who are not what you don't want, what, what you want to get rid of, so, so, something different. Get in a room where of the people that you aspire to be like or to have their life like them. And all of a sudden, the conversation is not about what you've been talking about around the water cooler at your office. You know, it's a completely different conversation that you'll never hear at that water cooler. And all of a sudden, you're starting to think and dream things that you never thought before. And people are proving to you that it can be done and maybe even proving that people like you can do it. You know, because I was no different than anybody. I, I was the slowest learner on the friggin' planet. I mean, I literally had to touch the burner three times to decide that it was hot enough to burn me. Yeah. I mean, that's how slow I am. I'm really slow. Now, once I get it, I get it. So, yeah. you know, now we're off to the races, but it takes me a little while. Sometimes I got to get hit in the head with a hammer with a concept, you know, get a concept has to hit me in the head like a hammer before I'll so, okay, that's what that's what uh, Robert Allen was talking about nothing down. Finally, I accidentally did a nothing down deal. Now I get it. Well, now I own the concept in my heart. There's a lot of difference between hearing a concept and reading about a concept and then owning the concept in your heart. You ever had those aha moments where you're like, okay, now I got it? Yeah, it's it's it all comes down to, you know, as you're saying all that stuff, it's all follow up. You know, the, the concept has to keep coming around to you. And, and that's the same way that, you know, business world works as well, is, is that, you know, you have to keep hearing things over and over and over. And I'm the same exact way. You know, you've got to keep hearing it. And then once you hear it enough, bam, you got it. Yeah. So uh, one of the turning points in my life was, you know, I, uh, one, of, one of my mentors, he didn't sign on as my mentor. I just designated him my, him my mentor because I learned so much from him. He didn't even know that I was learning from him. I was just following him. I was watching his walk, realizing that, you know, he got kicked out of high school. He didn't even graduate. This guy's not smarter than me. He's not smarter than me. He, he seems like he's a lot smarter than me because he's doing some things I'm not doing. And he's made, but, but, but I, I know the guy, he's not, you know, he's a regular, he was a regular guy. And he's still a regular guy with a lot of money, uh, 700 free and clear houses. You know, um, one day I had been watching all the get rich, quick real estate tape seminars, gurus, late night infomercials and all that stuff. And I hadn't quite decided if any of it was worth the crap, you know, being the naysayer. Eh, it's just a bunch of sales bullshit. He invited me to go to, he says, you want to go with me to eat lunch? He says, yeah, but he says, well, I got to stop by the post office on the way though. It's April 15th. I got to drop off a check. And I said, okay. He goes, yeah, it's like killing me. You may have to pick me up off the ground when I get out, you know, before this is over with. I said, why? He goes, look at the check I'm sending in. I'm like, holy shit. I mean, his check was more than I've ever made in the, like the, if you added up my last five years of salary, you know, it was more than that, you know, like way more than that. And that's when it, that's when I had an aha moment said, you know, even if I'm half the man that guy is, I'll take it, you know, I'll take it. And I don't think I'm half the man this guy is. I think I'm just like him, you know, so why can't I do it? And the, 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 the answer was education. The answer was education. I just didn't even know what I didn't know. Right. So let John teach you how to do a follow-up system, a CRM, what it's all about. If you don't know, CRM stands for customer relations management. It's how you stick. It's about stickiness. It's about how you stick to your leads and how you do it automatically while in your sleep, uh, while you're doing other things, your, your, your follow-up. And then when the important call comes, you know, your alarm goes off and you're off to the races doing what you're supposed to be doing, not the other stuff. Go to 1000houses.com forward slash sweet spot. Get over to the show notes and also learn about uh, System Mate, the CRM, and uh, your, get your free sweet spot locator. All right, my friend, I'd like to thank you so much. I could probably talk to you for about 10 years and we'd never cover the same topic twice, but uh, appreciate you. Say hi to everybody in Dayton for me. All right. I will do that, man. I, thank you for having me on, man. It was, it was a blast. 
All right, this is Mitch Steven with 1000houses.com podcast. I'd like to thank everybody out there for stopping by to get you some John Cochran. And I would like to thank you guys for also supporting taxfreefuture.com. If you've got an IRA or 401k or self tax deferred or or tax-free retirement plan, and you would like to have it self-directed where you get to decide where this money goes and what kind of risk you take, then go to taxfreefuture.com and check it out. You will be amazed. Make sure you get those 33 little video vignettes. All right, we're out of here. Bye now.